Fame for High School is proud to bring you episode number two of the Tradition of Excellence. This episode brings you class of 1967 Fame for alumni, Gary Stock. Gary has done a lot since graduating from Fame for High School. He had a career in maintenance, health, safety education, and he has been the voice of the hot dogs as a PA announcer for nearly 30 years. And most recently, a published author. With all of Gary's experiences, he goes deep into some life lessons that set an example for all hot dogs. I know it touched me. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to episode two of Pillars of Excellence interviews with hot dog alumni. I'm Doug Wood, and this is Gary Stott, class of 67. So Gary, uh, we'll get this going. Um, what were you involved, with, uh, involved in when you were in high school? Uh, basically, uh, I, I was, I'm not by any stretch of imagination an athlete, never was, but I did participate in as many sports as I could get into. I uh, was in three plays in high school. I was in uh, Inherit the Wind and um, Red Badge of Courage and in, uh, believe it or not, St. Jo uh, St. Joan uh, by George Bernard Shaw. And then in my senior year, I won a regional speech contest. Um, I graduated about in the upper half of my class, not, not a superior student, but not a bad one. Yeah. And uh, um, probably mostly enjoyed uh, the mathematics parts of it, although the, the literature parts were interesting also. But mathematics was a little bit more up my alley. Yeah, um, I know growing up, I, coming to all the hot dog events, I heard you as the voice of Frankfurt, as I like to say. Um, um, so if you want to talk a little bit about that. I, I um, well, of course, I got the job uh, about almost 30 years ago. Uh, Dick Kaplinger at the time was the athletic director. Um, he needed a substitute. I had done a couple of games in the middle school. I had done a few baseball games for the Rotary Baseball. And uh, I kind of approached Dick Kaplinger asking him that, hey, if you ever needed a sub, I'd like to give it a shot. He needed a sub, I ended up, it was the uh, boys girls basketball was starting to do the double header thing. Ed Niehaus at the time was the announcer and he was also the girls basketball coach. So when you did a boys girls basketball game, he had no way to get to the boys game. So I ended up starting to do the boys games on all the double headers. Then Mr. Kaplinger came up to me and asked me, do you really wanna be the announcer in Case Arena, and I said, yes, I really do. And he said, well, the only way to Case Arena is through the pool. And it's like, what? <laughs> and so I ended up becoming the school, the pool announcer uh, for the swim meets. And then it kind of evolved. Next thing I know, I'm doing basketball. I'm getting, I got the boys basketball. Next thing after that, I was asked, hey, what are you doing Thursday night in the fall? And I ended up with volleyball. Hey, are you busy on Friday nights? I ended up with football. And then about 18 years ago, I finally picked up my last one. I started doing baseball games. All right. Um, so I guess that kind of goes into like, um, what you do now. Um, like how, like what, like, I know you said you do, you've had a lot of professions, but um, I just in general. I basically, uh, I mean, just a little history. I, I was uh, in maintenance um, at Eli Lilly until Le the Lilly plant was sold to Evonik. I worked for Evonik for five years. So a total of about 38 years uh, at the Lafayette plant in the maintenance. And then one of the things I did when I was in maintenance, I started out as a pipe fitter, moved to being a pipe fitter welder, and then ended up as a maintenance uh, training coordinator. So I was actually starting to uh, work in adult education as far as health and safety and some uh, skilled trades type things and then um, finished my career there. The last five or six years I was a maintenance planner. So I retired from there. Five days before I retired, uh, the department head of the central stores came up to me and said, hey, what was the biggest problem in the last 20 years that you've had in maintenance? And I said, it was central stores. And she said, would you like to fix it? Um, I said, I don't know. I said, I don't think I can fix it in five days. And she said, no, no. She said, I want to hire you. So I ended up being a consultant um, and still 
for seven years I've been there, other than a year and a half or two years because of COVID, uh, I was off uh, site, but I've been basically there for about five or six years. Um, you know, we were talking before this interview, um, and you said you uh, wrote a book, if you want to talk a little bit about that. I, I did. Uh, I wrote a book, and I was told that I could bring the, bring the <laughs> copy. It goes on sale, we believe, sometime at the end of September or uh, uh, mid-November, or mid-October, I mean. And it, uh, uh, it's called Tales of Grandpa. Uh, it would be sold at Barnes & Nobles. It is uh, 14 short stories. I have six grandchildren. Uh, who have imaginations and who tell me things. And I found myself writing little stories in verse, uh, kind of based on some of the things that they would talk about. And so I ended up, I've got 14 little short stories here that written in verse uh, have something to do with uh, the six, my six grandchildren. Uh, so uh, that, so if, if you get a chance, Tales from a Grandpa. Should be on the bookshelf sometime this month or next. And then, uh, uh, and I am working on a second one. Yeah, I'll have to make sure to go check that one out. Um, so how did uh, Frankfurt High School prepare you for uh, your career? I, uh, actually, it, the mathematics, um, I, I've, been in, I've been in construction since I was 14. So math, and mathematics is an absolute necessity in the industry so math in construction and maintenance you you can't do anything without um even and believe it or not as a pipe fitter a uh, little trig formula trigonometry formulas are used on a constant basis and so you uh, the mathematics that i got out of high school was uh, extremely important i believe that i mean the fact that i wrote written the book the fact that i was an instructor uh, for about 18, for about eight years, uh, all because of the English and speech uh, capabilities, the, the ability to lose fear, the fear of standing in front of a crowd or a camera even, and, and being able to just talk. Um, uh, high school also taught me a lot about people. Uh, I, think, I think really in all fairness, high school is probably the best place in the world to learn about people. Uh, because you have friends, uh, you have people who are not so friends, and, uh, and you learn how to deal with it. And because that's what life is about anyways, it's a good thing to learn in high school. Um, so what advice would you give to uh, yourself like when you were 16 years old? I, I um, oh man, I, I've been influenced lately by a couple of individuals on like pod you know podcasts and stuff jordan peterson is one of them i think the words of jordan peterson where you you the only thing you have control of in your life is you you have total control of you so if you work to make you a better person then life becomes a a little easier because decisions become a little easier. And then because you are a result of your decisions, uh, those decisions lead to opportunities. And then in the words of Mike Rowe, who was Dirty Jobs, who said that maybe you shouldn't follow your dreams. Maybe you should seize your opportunities and bring your passion. So if I were to, that's basically what I would tell myself is like, Make yourself a better you, which leads to better, to a better person, to better, to better choices, to better opportunities, and then to a potential success and peace inside yourself. That's what I would ask. That's what I would tell any senior right now. Um, seize those opportunities. Bring your passion. Well, uh, it's been great talking to you, Gary. Uh... Uh, thank, thank you guys for tuning in um, to episode two of the Pillars of Excellence interviews with the Hot Dog alumni, and uh, we'll see you next time.